when when we look at um, the way the season stacks up, Vernon, and this decision that Gus Malzahn is going to need to make to get uh, this team ready for Oregon, the, the, the decision at the quarterback spot, uh, I've always heard reports that he really likes the skill set of Joey Gatewood. Um, certainly, he's a redshirt freshman. He's been on campus, uh, and he's seen him play for now about a year and a half. Uh, and, and Bo Nix is certainly a, the five star. He seems to be the future of the program. Um, but uh, regardless, uh, they, they lose the veteran presence and the NFL arm of a Jared Stidham. But on the other hand, with Gus Melzahn back in the play callers position, he seems to have a quarterback in play, regardless of the decision, who has the ability with his feet to run the offense in more of a Gus Melzahn style. For sure. For sure. As a matter of fact, uh, Joey Gatewood or Bo Nix uh, could be could really thrive in this system. Uh, both have the ability to run the football. Joey Gatewood seems to be the more eager of the two as far as running the football, but Bo Nix uh, can run it as well. Now I don't think he plans on that. That's not necessarily uh, what he what what his biggest skill set is. But the biggest thing I like about Bo Nix, like I said before, is his ability to he when when the play when the uh, play is called as a pass. He's going to do all he can to stretch the football out to get the ball, ball vertically downfield. Joey Gatewood, in my opinion, from, from what I saw of him, once the run pass option gets going and he gets that rhythm going, it starts to create passing lanes for him to be a more effective passer and have the defenses all balanced to be an effective runner. I look at the opener against Oregon. Oregon is a team that, just like Auburn, has some type of redemptive status going on. I think Oregon left some uh, games on the table. You talk about the 38-31 to 31 overtime loss uh, to Stanford. Uh, the road games, which really were detrimental for the Oregon football team, lost to Washington, Washington State 34-20, to 20, uh, lost to Arizona 44-15. to 15. And then the big one against Utah, which kind of would have salvaged the season, was up 25-22 to 22, uh, with eight minutes left in the game and then squandered 10 straight points to lose that game. One thing Auburn is going to have to be very careful of especially in the interior line, we're going to see really quick if center Caleb Kim has improved as a center because he's going to be facing Jordan Scott. I don't know if you've really looked at Washington, I mean, Oregon football, but Jordan Scott, the, no, the nose tackle, is very, very disruptive. One play that I remember in particular to show his level of disruption, there was a real key play in the Stanford game. This actually should have uh, put that game away. Jordan Scott made a play. The, uh, Stanford was going forward on fourth down to kind of to, to try to get back in the game. Fourth down and almost less than a yard. Jordan Scott was very disruptive in helping Oregon to get that fourth down stop that should have actually ended that game. So that's a matchup I want you to look for, Mark, is Caleb Kim and the offensive guards against Jordan Scott from Oregon. That's going to be huge in that game. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, bringing on uh, Vernon Speaks Sports. Uh, catch him on YouTube, breaking down Auburn and the rest of the SEC on his channel. Does an outstanding job. And so we yank him on here and uh, get his analysis of uh, Auburn and, again, the rest of the conference. I uh, want to invite everyone who likes to throw a few bucks on the games that you can do that and help a worthy cause as well. Uh, grab the link down in the description section below next to the hashtag Sam Strong. It's a joint venture between myself and a number of YouTubers uh, that we were invited to join uh, with St. Jude's Hospital and betnow.eu. So grab that link, use the promo code MRTVCFB, MRTVCFB, and you get 50% added to your account uh, right there. Uh, when I look at the rest of the offense, uh, five starters back along an offensive line that was okay, was marginal for the most part last year. Uh, the wide receivers, as I mentioned off the top, I think they're one of the best groups in the SEC. And the running game, even though there wasn't a thousand yard rusher for the first time in about a decade, they're stacked with enough guys that are capable that I, I think if they get quarterback play and improvement from, again, five starters along that offensive front that should have gained so much experience over the last year to, to, to take that step in development, that the offense could be really good. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe so. Um, I think especially with Gus Malzahn calling plays, the offensive line will be in a much better position to be a lot more aggressive. A lot of Chip Lindsey's plays were really slow developing at times and caused you to have to think too much. And in the SEC, you have to attack. You know, you don't have time 
uh, with these slow development plays getting busted up in the backfield. I think Auburn has an opportunity, um, you know, especially with the talent and the skill set of the off- of the offensive line slash the running backs. I mean, you pick which running back you want to start, whether it's Cam Martin, Sean Shivers, even Harold Joyner actually had a 65 yard run in the latest uh, scrimmage game for the Auburn Tigers. Who, so he he's definitely turning some heads up there. And also the the uh, the late snatch of DJ Williams uh, in the in last year's recruiting class. He's come along strong. Uh, head coach Cadillac Williams has said a lot of great things about the work ethic of DJ Williams. So I really think Auburn is in a position that, like you said, if you can get this quarterback situation uh, solidified, of course you got the game against Oregon, but you have two very, very winnable games against non-Power 5 teams, uh, Kent State and Tulane, to where you can have some time. You have two solid weeks to really, really figure this thing out before Auburn gets into the treacherous uh, zone of SEC play. Yeah, so they're going to rely on defense, of course, as they have in the past uh, with one of the best defensive fronts in college football, Nick Coe, Derek Brown, Marlon Davidson, and company. Uh, How do you assess the defense? Uh, The defensive backs are generally back. Uh, Some replacements need to be made along the uh, linebacking core. You know, I'm really excited about this defense. Uh, I think the defensive line is obviously solid. They're still trying to figure out, Auburn is still trying to figure out who the the second tier of the defensive line is going to be. I think they're pretty solid with Derrick Brown, you know, Tyrone is Truesdale and, and the veterans. But, you know, uh, Rodney Garner likes to run, obviously, what you need to run in the SEC or high-level Power 5 football is a two-deep defensive front. Um, that's not really my concern. But what really excites me is about the fact that Kevin Steele is going to really, really have an athletic set of linebackers that really can cover a lot of ground that say – uh, Deshaun Davis from last year, Daryl Williams, uh, Montavious Atkinson, they weren't that that good as far as covering the edge and the flat. And I think these guys, uh, Zacoby McClain, K.J. Britt, Chandler Wooten, and man, they are really, 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 really excited about Owen Papo, the five-star recruit out of Grayson. Uh, saw an interview uh, last night, actually, uh, with Travis Williams, who is currently the linebackers coach slash co-defensive coordinator. He's actually trying guys in that Mike linebacker position. The Mike linebacker position, obviously, is the middle linebacker position. His requirement, not necessarily the skill set. Of course, all of these guys, he said all the guys have the skill set. But what he's looking for is that quarterback on the linebacking core like he had in Deshaun Davis. And he said K.J. Britt is doing an excellent job. He switches Chandler Wooten out in that position as well, who's been doing well. So we'll see where uh, Travis Williams finalizes his Mike linebacker position, which is probably one of the most important positions on this defense. Then we go over to the cornerback position, the secondary. The only position that I'm like severely concerned about is the is the field cornerback position. That's the co- portion of the cornerback that has to cover the most ground. Usually your all-American cornerback for most of your teams are on that cover that kind of ground. Uh, the starter is uh, Noah Igbenogany. He was actually a wide receiver, probably one of the best position switches in recent history for Auburn. He seems to be a natural at that position. If you look at the depth chart, you see if he goes down, Derek Devin Barrett is up. I'm not really comfortable with that. But what I am comfortable with is Auburn having a very solid 2019 recruiting class that included Zion Puckett uh, from Griffin, Georgia, who could have uh, you know some kind of immediate impact. And there's another guy that I have in my notes, but I can't find it. Uh, but either way, uh, no, Jamie and Sherwood also in that uh, defensive backfield that can supplement the safeties. Smoke Monday, who can supplement the safety. So Auburn is actually in pretty good shape. Even if it comes down to it, you can actually switch, say, Jamie and Sherwood to the nickelback and then move Christian Tut over to the boundary cornerback. So they have a lot of options within the cornerback, within the secondary where they can move some things around. So I'm really excited about that. Vernon, have you made a prediction on this team? I did on another channel. My prediction was nine regular season wins, 10 wins uh, with the bowl game. I think that's not optimal for this team, but I think this is very, very plausible for the for the amount of talent that's coming back, uh, for the experience. I really, really think nine regular season wins, 10 with the bowl win. Yeah, it's the typical rough go in the SEC West, and then they draw the, the most difficult uh, possible assignment out of the East. 
with right. Georgia and Florida, the Gators game on the road, and then, of course, the Oregon game with the other three non-conference games that should be wins. Uh, nine and three certainly sounds feasible for me. I thought uh, my projection going way back to the spring was eight and four, so nine and three is right in the same territory. I have yet to make my final prediction uh, on everybody, but that's coming up uh, Wednesday night. Uh, Vernon, we appreciate you stopping by, breaking down Auburn football. And again, I encourage everybody to go over to uh, Vernon Speak Sports on YouTube uh, and uh, the assessment of Auburn football, the analysis, the breakdown, the unique uh, take needs to be checked out by one and all. So head on over there. Vernon, always appreciate the analysis, sir. I appreciate it, Mark. Be hope to be back soon.